What is up everyone? It's the champion of Kanto here and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. Looks like Darwin's got a present for us after last episode of course. We took down the Elite Four and Gibby to become the champion of Kanto. And Darwin you did such a good job that you deserve a little pat on the hat. <laughs> But of course, we find ourselves back in Pallet Town, in our very own room where the adventure started. And today, we're going to be going after a very elusive Pokemon indeed, which you all probably know what it is by the title. But Gibby's here to give us a little bit of clues. Don't get too comfortable with that title. I plan on stealing it from you soon. First though, there's talk going around about some crazy strong looking Pokemon. And I'm going to catch it. Ha! I knew you would be able to resist. The Pokemon was seen near Cerulean City, and apparently it ran away into a cave somewhere there. So, I say we both go try to catch it. Whoever catches it first is the winner. Well, you're on, Gibby, because today we're going after the legendary Mewtwo. And I am so excited. If you guys are as well, make sure to hit that like button for the beginning of the post game, which really isn't going to be too long. And technically, last episode, we did the Elite Four rematches, which is also post game. But hey, our world has expanded after becoming champion. And now we can fly into the sky with Charizard, Aerodactyl and Dragonite. What? Oh, hey, youngster. Sorry to bug you while your world's expanding. Wow, way to break the fourth wall. Now that you're champion, I've got some news for you. The Master Trainers, trainers that have spent their whole careers training one specific Pokemon have appeared. I'd say challenging the Eevee Master is a good place to start. Head to Pokemon Road to face her. If you don't know the details, talk to me. Well, you just told us the details, unless there's more to it than that. What do you want to know about the Master Trainers? Uh, nothing really, but I guess we'll learn a little bit about them. They're basically trainers that have dedicated their whole lives to training just one specific Pokemon, and you've got to take them down in order to earn their title. So if you beat the Eevee Master, you will become the Eevee Master. So there's one for every single Pokemon, which means 151 Master Trainers to take down. So it might take quite a while. So we'll get to that eventually. But for now, let's fly into the sky. And oh my gosh, we're actually in the sky this time. And as you can see, we can fly over the trees, the fences, even the rocks and into the ocean. This is amazing, and I've been waiting for this. Even though I got spoiled of this feature a while back, I've been looking forward to actually getting to try it myself, and it is awesome so far, except for wild Pidgeys. Apparently, I'm running out of Ultra Balls too, which would not be good if we're going after Mewtwo, but let's first fly around for a little bit and kind of test the limits of this new flying power here. Uh, you can see we can go over most rocks and ledges and fences and stuff, but we can't go over certain buildings like the Pokemon League badge check gate here. So let's explore from the other side of the Pokemon League and ride on the back of Petrie the Aerodactyl this time because... I don't know, he looks awesome! Like, look at this! We're literally riding on the back of a pterodactyl right now, and his head looks a lot bigger than I thought, but you may notice a little trainer over there with a Venusaur over her head, and that is actually what the Master Trainers look like, so I guess they're all dressed in red. Uh, we got another dude over here who's apparently the Charizard Master Trainer, and we do happen to have a Charizard on our team, so let's actually test how tough these Master Trainers happen to be. The way you get on and off the flying Pokemon is a little bit weird, but let's try out these Master Trainers and see just how tough they actually are. I'm the Charizard Master. I aim to find the ultimate Charizard. If you want to battle me, you've got to put Charizard in the top left position. Okay, well, I didn't know that, but I guess... It's pretty simple. I don't know what level these Master Trainers are going to be at, but I'm ex expecting them to be a little bit higher than our own Charizard here. So even if we lose, let's give it a try against the Charizard Master Trainer. It's time for a Charizard on Charizard battle. Whose heat will come out on top? Let's find out, Edmund, as he sends out his Charizard. And I don't know if uh, he's got a Mega Evolution on this guy, but... I do notice the music, whoa! It's a bit of a remix here, and we actually have the chance to run as well, so... Level 75, looking a little bit tough right now, but I believe in our Charizard, okay, maybe I don't believe. Um, If we had a Rock-type move, perhaps, but actually, if he is a Charizard X as well, we could go Outrage, I mean, regardless, that's gonna be our best option, so let's just try it out. Cinder, get the power of the Mega Stone, and become... 
the shiny dragon you always wanted to be. Or maybe it's just me that wanted that, but... Hey, he goes for the Thunder Punch, and that's good because we actually turn into a dragon now. What's not so good is we get paralyzed, but here comes the Outraging, and at least uh, Edmund here doesn't have a Mega Evolution of his own. Which, I mean, it would have made it easier if he turned into Charizard X, but actually, never mind. He does have Dragon Pulse, so that's probably gonna take us down here. Yeah, sorry, Cinder. Maybe you're not quite ready to take on this Master Trainer just yet, but... Honestly, if we were able to teach Charizard a rock move, uh, we'd probably be able to destroy his Charizard, but I knew it! My Charizard's the best of them all! Okay, dude. I feel bad now. I don't know why I even bothered taking him on, but let's get to what we're actually doing in today's episode, which is, of course, catching the legendary Mewtwo. Whoa, Darwin! <laughs> what? I thought Darwin left us, but he came as soon as it was called and is a little bit closer than usual, so might as well give some more pets, but no! I keep getting distracted, we gotta sky dash our way over to Cerulean City, which is of course where Gibby said uh, the elusive Pokemon was spotted, so it's time to sky dash one more time, Darwin! Except it's not gonna be the last time at all. And while we're here, I wanted to mention another feature in the post-game is you can actually take on the Gym Leader rematches. So right now, if we head into the Cerulean Gym, which I don't know where I'm going right now, but it's over there, uh, you can actually take on Misty with a whole new team powered up and ready to go, as we have the Jinx Master Trainer over here behind this fence. What are you doing there, dude? But yeah, uh, even though there's not too much to do in the post-game here in Let's Go, uh, you can take on all the Gym Leaders in rematches including some very special trainers, which actually we couldn't take on at all before. I'm not going to spoil right now because I do plan on doing those gym leader rematches later, but uh, for now, let's head on over here and you will see there's master trainers all over the place now, which is really cool. It actually adds a little bit more liveliness to the world, I guess. Whoa, there's a Polyrath trainer right there. What the? How do we even get there? Oh, that's like behind the burglar's house or where we found that rare candy, I guess, but... Dang, these Master Trainers are everywhere, dude, including this Jinx one over here, probably in one of the weirdest spots, but I feel like there would be a hidden item uh, somewhere on this path. Really? Is there nothing? Okay, well, at least there's the Golduck Master Trainer there. It's gonna be really weird to find all of them, like, not just take them on, but also apparently finding them is a challenge, as right in front of the Cerulean Cave, we have a Coach Trainer. I almost forgot what these are called. Hey champion, you're allowed to enter this cave. From now on, I'll face you as a coach trainer. Are you ready? Then let's battle. Yes, I know I'm champion and I am indeed ready. So the final coach trainer of Let's Go is going to be Harjit. That is a very interesting name. I feel like that's like a reference to a Game Freak employee or some type of person that was related to someone at Game Freak, because that's like a really oddly specific name. Or maybe it's quite a common name, I'm not sure, but it doesn't sound like any Pokemon names you usually hear. Anyway, Harjit here is going to have a Rhydon to lead off his party, and I don't know if he actually has any specialty to his coach training, but he does have a Rock Slide, which is definitely what we could have used against the Charizard Master Trainer, but instead it's going to be used against our own Cinder, to start off the battle a little bit shaky. We kind of need our Pokemon alive too to take on Mewtwo because like the other legendary Pokemon, the legendary birds, uh, you actually have to challenge them in a battle, or I guess take on Mewtwo in a battle before you get the chance to catch him. And we do have the Master Ball, so I don't think catching him is gonna be all that big of an issue, but uh, I'm not really sure if I wanna use the Master Ball because you guys know how I feel about cheapness in these games. I mean, I guess I'm always changing my mind on it, but what I'm trying to say is I would rather give myself the challenge of catching it with the Ultra Ball uh, before, you know, just copping out with the Master Ball. But uh, Coach Trainer here is going to have a Rapidash up next, which means the Sani can make quick work of that with the Hydro Pumping, just like we did Gibby's Rapidash last episode. And by the way, I know it took a little while again to come out with the, uh, this next episode, but I've actually been a little bit sick. I think I mentioned it in the uh, Elite Four episode, but right after recording that, I actually completely caught the cold or like it got much worse, basically. Like, I guess it was more of a fever than a cold, but I've been having like pretty bad night sweats and like coughing my lungs out pretty much, uh, which really sucks, but I'm finally feeling better now. So hopefully I'll be able to 
be more consistent with these, you know, because I would like to upload more than once a week. I know you guys, I've been saying that for a while, uh, but legit stuff keeps getting in the way. Like, I got sick now, and also there's always kind of people visiting my house, and I know I haven't done my apartment tour or house tour. I mean, technically it's an apartment, but I don't know why I just called it a house. Uh, anyway, apartment tour will be coming soon. Uh, hopefully in the month of June, I'm gonna be working on it, uh, but then you guys can get a better idea of how my layout here works because it's kind of complicated whenever people are staying over uh, because I don't really have a door to my room. I feel like I've explained this before, but maybe it would make more sense if I actually showed it. Uh, I did actually show my apartment in one video, I think when I was sick way back a year ago. Now that I think about it, I've been getting sick a little bit too much, I feel, and I totally could have stayed in on Dasani too because I believe a Nido King is coming out here. And even though Ninetales can definitely take care of it with a Blizzard or two, uh, Dasani might have been better off with just a Hydro Pump or Psychic. Never mind, we hit the Blizzard, so it's gonna take it out. I was gonna say I'm scared of getting hit by a Sludge Bomb or something, but it doesn't matter now. The Nido King goes down, and that is the King Coach Trainer's final Pokemon. Is this the power of the top trainer? I guess so. One shot and everything out here. What a great battle. That's what I expected from a champion. I didn't stand a chance. Please accept this from me. And we get the TM for Megahorn, which he actually did use once on us, but didn't even take us down. Anyway, I hear the Pokemon in the Cerulean Cave are terrifyingly strong. Of course, I'm just a guard, so I don't know for sure. Have you really never stepped in here, dude? Like, you just stand outside forever and never actually venture in? Well, to each their own, I guess, but... Is there anything actually over here? Oh, there is a item, and it is a PP Max. But yeah, to finish up my story real quick, uh, basically whenever I have friends over and I want to record, I gotta kick them out of my whole apartment because there's no door to my room, and they don't really want to sit there listening to me record. Or I mean, I guess some of them do, but I don't really like to have a live studio audience, you know? There's just something about it which makes it a little bit awkward or weird like I feel like I'm not being myself you know when other people are actually there listening but then again I guess you guys are listening all the time when you actually watch the videos but maybe you get what I'm saying it's it's something weird about them being in person even though I really can't see them but uh, over here we've got another PP Max actually and the Cerulean Cave has a really unique look to it actually in this game which I am really digging so far. All the crystals and shiny stuff all around, and over here, another item, as well as a Geodude, which kind of looked like a shiny Geodude for a second, uh, but that's definitely not golden enough, I would say. Uh, Max Revive. Wait, is that the item we just got? I haven't really been paying attention, but... Ooh, Golden Nana Berry has a hidden item there. And I'm pretty sure most of these little shiny patches are actually going to have hidden items on them, which uh, replenish every day. So come back to Cerulean Cave uh, after a day has gone by and check on all of these spots. The items will have refreshed. And I'm pretty sure sometimes you can get some really rare items from these patches, like rare candies and maybe even a Master Ball if you're lucky enough. But hey, uh, speaking of, we just got one there, but of course that's not one of the items that will replenish. Only the hidden items, of course, will, you know, regenerate or replenish or restock. I don't know what word to use, but hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to say. Uh, basically, all these little items we're picking up right now will be randomly generated every single day. And there's a chance that it could even be a Master Ball or like a Rare Candy. So pretty crazy items you can get from the Cerulean Cave here. So far, though, we haven't gotten anything too crazy aside from the Golden Berries and actually a Max Lore here. Uh, which is a static item though, so not really too crazy again, but wow, we're finding a lot of Ultra Balls too, even though I just stocked up on more, but um, as you can see, there's also some pretty rare Pokemon you can find in here, and I believe there's some that we haven't caught at all yet, but we might have to get a little catch combo going to get the really rare Pokemon to appear. Uh, we could also throw up a Max Lore actually. You can notice a couple of Gravelers popping up already, so I wonder if maybe Golem might be around here too. Oh, Lickitung, what is up, dude? This is actually the first Lickitung 
or first area that you can actually find this Pokemon, and I love it so much, man. I don't want to spoil too much about Detective Pikachu, but let's just say Lickitung makes a surprise appearance in there, and uh, speaking of Detective Pikachu, I did actually go see the movie last weekend, and I want to bring out my review this weekend, but I was waiting for people to kind of watch the movie because I want to do a full spoiler review, you know, and... I wanted to give people a chance to actually watch the movie before I spoil it for them, but uh, Licky Tongue, definitely one of the best cameos in that movie, and now the Licking Pokemon is ours. Its tongue spans almost seven feet and moves more freely than its forelegs. Its licks can cause paralysis. Just cause? I'm pretty sure I'd be paralyzed just from seeing that thing in front of me, but okay, whatever you say, Pokedex. Uh, anyway, let's see if there's anything else here that we didn't quite get as a ditto pops up right in front of us And it is a tiny variant so we oh, Might as well catch it if I can actually throw my pokeballs today Gotta practice a little bit before we take on Mewtwo of course because you guys know my throwing skills were a little bit off during the legendary birds episode so Hopefully I can get a little bit better luck today. Well, I guess it's not really luck. It's all up to me and how I swing my wrist around or something. Anyway, we did have a ditto in the decks already from the uh, Pokemon Mansion, I believe. Uh, but I just saw a Rhyhorn pop up there, which begs the question if a Rhydon might be located in here as well. But I'm pretty sure I checked out all of the little glowing patches. So unless there's items on like these crystals as well, which I don't think so. Let's head back down and track down Mewtwo who I actually have no idea how to get to. Uh, Cerulean Cave is probably the dungeon I'm least experienced with, but judging by how Darwin is a little shooketh, I'm guessing he's on this floor here. Darwin feels the tension in the air, and of course, that marks a legendary Pokemon being nearby. Why is Eevee's tail wagging at this specific spot right here? Like, what the heck? And is that a Golduck I see? Holy moly, I did not think you could find those in the wild either. But you know what? This gives me an idea to actually throw up uh, Lure here. And we actually did pick up a Max Lure earlier. Uh, but apparently I also bought a bunch, so that's good. Let's throw that up and see what other Pokemon might pop up as we navigate our way through the Cerulean Cave. I feel like the puzzle here is definitely changed from the original red and blue as well as fire red and leaf green because I definitely do re not remember this layout at all and hey another licky tongue pops up uh, could get a catch combo going but actually the last thing we caught was licky or ditto sorry I just saw a ditto pop up right there too I mean we could go for it but nah let's just keep trekking through grabbing all the items that we can get uh, even though we don't really need full restores at this point like I guess there's the gym leader rematches and whoa ride on what are you doing dude just chilling like okay I guess we get a chance to catch this guy and I'm glad we got a whole bunch of ultra balls from the cave too because yeah we're probably gonna need all of them for Mewtwo I feel so far so good though as we catch ride on on the first try as well I think that was an excellent throw too so we should be getting some good experience here Dasani gets the level up and of course ride on will be added to the decks or maybe not um I guess I had one already, I don't even remember when I got him, but whoa! Wild Snorlax is in here too? What? Yo, Cerulean Cave is crazy, dude. I think no matter what kind of berries you use, the circle stays red, so... Maybe it would help if I tried to wait till the circle gets really small. I mean, I don't think that really affects your chances of catching it, just the experience you get at the end, but... I don't know, I feel better when I get an excellent capture, so... Come on, man! Snorlax! Oh, of course it runs away too. Ah, it's not like I wanted you anyway. Let's move on to the thing that we came here for, what we've been waiting for the whole episode. And no, it is not the large ditto over there. And no, it is not the hidden items that I keep stopping for. You guys know what it is. The legendary DNA Pokemon, or whatever it's called. I think it actually is a DNA Pokemon, but we'll find out when we actually get it. I think this is it guys, Mewtwo should be right up ahead, and oh my gosh, there it is! Whoa, I was wondering if there would be a hidden item in the water, and indeed it is, which is probably what was causing Eevee's tail to shake earlier, but now that we got that, there are no further delays, it's time to get Mew- No, Polyworld! 
as I was saying, it is time to catch Mewtwo. And before we take this behemoth on, of course I'm gonna be saving the game because I don't know if this thing can run away, man. I don't even know what it's capable of, but let's find out. Really? The Pokemon capable of striking fear in any trainer's hearts, Mewtwo has appeared. And of course, his stats raise just like Ultra Beast and apparently other legendary Pokemon in this game. Uh, we gotta take it down before we can actually catch it. Which begs the question why I didn't lead off with Frank. Probably the best at taking on Mewtwo here. Uh, he's starting off with Amnesia though, which raised his special defense and means this Hydro Pump is not gonna do anything. That's a Hydro Pump, by the way, guys. You all know how powerful that usually is on Dasani, and it barely tickled Mewtwo. It's like those spray bottles they use to, like, teach dogs, or I guess, Stitch. <laughs> Frank, you know what to do. Tank the Psychic. Actually, it can't even hit us, so I guess that's as good as a tank can get. Let's see how we handle the Swiftness, though. And now we can go for the Crunch. Okay, that's some pretty big damage, about however, or about as much as I was hoping for. Uh, we could go for the Shake It Up with Darwin, but oh, Mewtwo actually has Recover, okay. I guess I was kind of expecting that, but not really, I kind of forgot. Anyway, the Crunch does do some good damage, so if we can get like four in a row, we should be able to take it down. But maybe I should also go for a Toxic, just in case it keeps recovering. I feel like that would be a good... Uh, fail safe or whatever you call it like a plan B or something Or we could just go for one more crunch and hope that he doesn't recover. No, of course he recovers What did I think he was gonna do? Maybe I should just go for the toxic this time Of course Mewtwo's gonna recover again. So yeah, I should have just done this from the start We would have already been on like turn six of the toxic uh, Which can probably just take out Mewtwo just from the poison at that point Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it'd be doing some good damage is what I mean. Now it's poison though, so let's see. Uh, do we actually go for a heal up? I don't think it can take us out with a swift. I mean, it's swift. It's not exactly the most powerful attack out there. So let's start crunching it down now. And even if it recovers, like the poison will eventually take it down, like I said, but we get another defense drop. So Mewtwo, I think your days are numbered, pal. Barely not getting taken down by the poison there, so you know what? I'm gonna hit you with the disrespect. Frank is gonna get real up close and personal, and we're going for the poison jab as the final move. I feel like I've barely ever used poison jab on Frank, but this time around we're gonna use it to take down the most powerful Pokemon of them all. Except technically the poison took it down, but still, good job Frank. You really proved yourself there. And now we get our chance to catch Mewtwo. We do have the Master Ball, like I said. I'm really tempted, like, at this point there's not really any other Pokemon that we need to use it on, but I'm gonna at least try to catch it with an Ultra Ball first. Uh, hopefully Mewtwo can't run away, I mean, I really don't know, but wait a second. What are those things around it? Oh my gosh, can I really not toss it to the side? Like, what? Come on, I thought I knew how to throw the... Ah. Oh, there we go. I guess I do know how to throw it to the side, but just doesn't work half the time. Anyway, we hit the Ultra Ball and almost catch it on the first try. Holy moly, that would have been crazy. Of course, Mewtwo's just gonna jump away from that one and... What? Come on, that was totally to the side. Okay, we hit that one as it was about to jump away from it, but we got a one, a two, a three, and a not a catch. Mewtwo keeps, uh, well, making it seem like he's about to stay, but obviously this is going to be a little bit more difficult than that. As I keep messing up the throws, wow, of course that time, he, when I throw it right, he jumps back to the center, but, alright, let's see this time. Okay, I was just going to stay quiet, because usually when I talk too much, I jinx it, but there's a great capture, and I don't care about jinxes or whatever superstitions. Mewtwo, you will be ours eventually, if I just go for another berry, maybe. We're running out of these, but as long as it works, you know, who cares if we run out? 
We get the excellent capture this time, and it's not even gonna be close. Just when it seemed like you had it, what do you mean? That was not even close, game. I don't know. The messages for when the Pokemon breaks free are kind of weird sometimes. Like, how does it say you almost had it when it literally shook once? The world may never know, but Mewtwo, please stay in the Ultra Ball this time. Nice catch, but no dice. We were so close too. See, it, like, it says it every time, man. Like, game, you know how close I really am. Stop messing with me. Oh my gosh, okay. Maybe we will have to use the Master Ball after all. Like, we're up to 47 Ultra Balls, I think I read. And I think we started off the episode with like 70. Well, I guess we found a bunch in the cave, but whoa, that's it. We've caught Mewtwo. What I'm most distracted, of course, is when it happens. Mew Pokemon there, or should I say Mew Pokemon, because we've got Mewtwo. Appropriately, Frank gains a level two. And Mewtwo is registered to the Dex. Look at that golden text. The genetic Pokemon. Its DNA is almost the same as Mew's. However, its size and disposition are vastly different. Of course, Mew is the, or Mewtwo was cloned from Mew, and we did actually get a Mew a long time ago from the Pokeball Plus. I believe is the only way you can get it in this game, but Darwin, so happy that we caught the legendary Mewtwo. You know, we might as well give you a little pet for a job well done. It's basically like our good luck charm for catching legendaries, I feel. And yeah, I guess that's it, guys. Let's take a look at our newly caught DNA Pokemon, or I think it was the genetic Pokemon, right? Impish nature, which is not good at all, actually. So I may just have to reset this guy. But honestly, I don't think I'm going to end up using this Mewtwo for competitive battling or anything. But it still kind of sucks to have a nature that lowers his main stat, you know, special attack, but Psychic, Recover, Amnesia, and Swift. Of course, we knew that because we just battled him, and Mew, who we received from the Pokeball Plus, who only has Pound and is level one, apparently. Wow. I thought we actually trained this little dude a little bit, but apparently not. Uh, let's actually add Mewtwo to our party, though, because I want to see him outside of the Pokeball, and Cinder's kind of dead right now, so I guess, you know, that's appropriate. Ooh, I just noticed how Mewtwo and Aerodactyl have, like, the same color scheme. And there it is! Mewtwo flying right behind us! Or should I say floating? Gracefully? Does he actually come out in the water? Oh man, that's a bummer. I didn't really expect him to, but, you know. Guess it's about time we head on out of the Cerulean Cave. And I'm actually gonna try to take on the Mewtwo Master Trainer, because... Someone actually told me if you take Mewtwo back to the Cinnabar Mansion, something special might happen, and I think that's actually where the Mewtwo Master Trainer is located anyway, so we might as well go investigate. As I just noticed, there's some items we left off here, so maybe I should actually pick those up. Oh, there's a lot of items that we apparently skipped over, so yeah. I'm gonna try to pick up everything here in Cerulean Cave, and uh, then I'll meet you guys back at Cinnabar Mansion. But seriously, Gravelers, why do you keep doing this to me? Dude, like, I actually have no idea how to get out of this cave, but I really hope it's this way. It kind of looks familiar, but then again, everything kind of does here. But indeed, it was the exit. And thank goodness, because I was starting to go crazy in there. Hey, Orange. Oh, wait, don't tell me. You already caught the super strong Pokemon, didn't you? I knew it. So it's called Mewtwo, huh? Yeah, it should be right behind me, but I don't know where he went. Man, you got to Mewtwo before me or that girl. Wait, what girl? Huh? I ran into this gutsy girl who said she was looking for a powerful Pokemon. I think she meant Mewtwo. Well, I guess that's that. Here, take these. I won't need them now. Hey, this is exactly what we needed to get out of there. Oh my gosh. Like, even the game acknowledges that people are probably going to get confused in there. I just saw that girl come in here too. She must still be looking for Mewtwo. You should go show it to her. Show her what? My Mewtwo? I guess that's the only thing that makes sense, and there he is! So powerful, man! I love Mewtwo, especially outside of its Pokeball. Like, this has got to be the best feature of Let's Go, for sure. And I'm definitely going to miss it in Sword and Shield. Not having the Pokemon following us, I mean, but... It'd be pretty difficult to do all 900 or so Pokemon that I'm assuming there's going to be in this game. But, you guys know what is next. I mentioned how... I read a comment, actually, uh, that said we should take Mewtwo to the Cinnabar Mansion, 
and last time I followed a comment's advice, I'm pretty sure I got trolled, but that's usually how it goes with YouTube comments. I don't care, let's just try it. And here we are back on Cinnabar where we've got the Executor Master Trainer as the lure runs out again, but yeah, we gotta head all the way into the basement, so I'll see you guys in a bit. And we're back, home sweet home, my fellow basement dwellers. I actually don't dwell in the basement anymore, but literally did live in the basement for like three years. Anyway, uh, we've got a couple of master trainers here, like this guy. I am the Meltan Master! I seek the ultimate Meltan! It would be wonderful to see a truly powerful Meltan even just once. Well, maybe I'll let you know if I get one myself, because honestly it seems really hard to get. I know it has to do with Pokemon Go, but honestly, I guess I just haven't took the time to research it, but here's the man that we were actually looking for, the Mewtwo Master Trainer. Now, I don't think we can take him on with our Mewtwo in its current state, like, we just get wrecked and not be able to hit it, but we do have TMs on our side, uh, which this dude definitely doesn't. Let's at least try it out and see how it goes. I am the Mewtwo Master! I seek the ultimate Mewtwo! Do they actually all say the same thing? I never noticed, but oh, I forgot we gotta put the Pokemon. Wait, it is in the top left. What? How come I can't take you on? What the? Hello? Is my Mewtwo not powerful enough? Like, do I need to train it first or what? What's happening? Why can't I take this guy on? Huh? Huh? I am actually gonna lose my mind if we run into another wild Pokemon, but you can see the Mew Master over there. Uh, let's go say hi to him then, because I think that's the area that you know, the comment was telling me to go to anyway, so uh, let's hit the switch, and I just noticed another very elusive Master Trainer over here. Is that what I think it is? Indeed, Mel Metal. Like I just said, I don't even have Meltan, so I don't know how the heck we can get- what? You guys have no idea how confused I just was. I really thought that dude challenged us with a Rattata for some reason, but Alright, here we are. Wait, this place looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Oh, it's a large container made of thick glass. It looks as if something has been beating on it over and over from inside. And we all know exactly what's been beaten on this glass. Uh, Mewtwo? You okay, dude? Is he actually just gonna stay there? Oh. Yo, that is so- okay, never mind. I thought he was really gonna just stay there. Here's the Mew Master, though. Uh, we don't really have a powerful Mew right now, but, uh... Let's just see what Mewtwo has to say about this container here. Mewtwo staring ahead at the large machine. Wait, that's it? That That's really it? Hold up. Why was he, like, just stuck there before then? Is that really all it is? Oh, okay then. I gotta say, that's not exactly what I was expecting, but at least it was something, so technically... The comments didn't troll me, but it was definitely a bit anticlimactic, like Mewtwo just kind of stood there and told us exactly what he was doing, which is staring at the glass. So I guess that's it then, guys. We've got Mewtwo now. We're in the post-game, boys. And there's quite a lot of things to do, so let me know what you'd like to see first. The Gym Leader rematches, the Special Trainer battles, which there's a couple of them in the game. Gibby actually hinted at one, and oh my gosh, Ratata! I'm done with Wild Pokemon. That is it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.